everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a weekend, Saturday, November 1st, 2025 is the date, 1221 p.m. California time here. Latest activity on the earthquake 3D globe shows a, uh, looks like a little 1.7, also a little 1.1 into the California region. Uh, some more deep earthquake activity here overnight along the Tonga Trench. Been, been a pretty good swarm of deeper activity there. Uh, also, a quite noticeable uptick here across the western area of the Pacific Plate and the adjacent plate here, the uh, uh, roughly about the southwestern edge of the Filipino Plate. Seen a, a pretty decent amount of earthquake activity here lighting up so far today. Of course, the earthquakes that are newer, recent ones, are going to be in the white circles. The older ones here in the red, darker circles. And take a look across this area. Just a cluster of earthquake activity here today. Turkey area still swarming like crazy. Uh, we are getting uh, quite a bit of uptick around the region here, so just be on guard. Lots of fours. Things uh, looking like we could get uh, maybe something bigger out here soon. A little uncertain exactly where it's going to be. I mean, we've had a you know swarm happening there in Turkey for a number of months, along with a couple six pointers. Um, had that recent swarm, uh, well, earlier this year, that uh, Santorini volcano swarm. Literally thousands and thousands of earthquakes there. And uh, I do think it's leading to something bigger in the region here. Just the question is where exactly? Uh, either way, pretty active out there today in the uh, four range. And of course, quite a few other smaller quakes in there as well. Just as I'm speaking about it, we get this one pop up in the Afghanistan area, 4.9 to add on to the uh, further earthquake activity out there. As you can see it on the globe as well, showing up uh, fairly recent. All right, West Coast activity. Uh, not a whole lot going on there through through the Washington and Oregon area. It is the weekend, and for the most part, the quakes will go unreported out here unless uh, it's above a certain a certain threshold. And for the most part, it's normally about 2.5 and above. Occasionally, they'll throw some smaller quakes in here, but yeah, it's not completely absent like that. That's that is uh, just not the case. I'm sure there's some earthquake activity out there. Uh, 340 epicenters of slow slip events there from yesterday. That's along the southern end here, mainly across this area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, as far as any volcano activity up there, we can check out Mount Rainier real quick. See what we have going on today. And the latest seismograph station here shows us. Make sure the bells are off, which they are. Um, a little bit of earthquake activity. This looks like some type of malfunction there in the um, amplitude readings of this digital seismograph station um, yeah that's not that's not anything of any importance just a uh, looks like an error there is some uh, earthquake activity though very small microquakes um, overnight quick glance at Mount St. Helens here up at the dome area the summit or the dome I guess that's a better word for it um, some smaller quake activity. There's one for sure. These look like maybe some either deeper events underneath the area or something uh, happening away from the region. Either way, a little bit of a little bit of noise showing up here on the seismograph station. I don't know if it's windy up there or not. Let's see what we got. I know we got a another system coming in. That could be some wind uh, movement. It does, and it will show up on the graphs. Oh yeah, look at that. So that's what. We're seeing here a lot of noise in the last few hours because of the uh, heavy-duty wind coming into the Pacific Northwest. Some of, the gusts, some of those gusts up there, it looks like around Mount Rainier, 50. It may even be higher than that. I may be getting some 60-mile-per-hour um, gusts up there across the uh, extreme uh, elevated regions. Uh, California, Northern California, just one earthquake down here at the southern end of the Cascadia from this morning, four point or uh, 1.5. Bay Area, San Francisco, a couple smaller quakes, really nothing big going on there for now. Uh, southern California, and in fact the West Coast, nothing above 2.5. All smaller microquake activity out here for now. Uh, some movement around the San Andreas Fault, the North American side here and the Pacific side. Nothing big going on there for now. Up at Yellowstone National Park, a handful of smaller quakes being reported. 
mainly from yesterday. We're not going to see anything show up here, even if it's small microquake activity, because it is the weekend. For whatever reason, the USGS chooses not to, uh, you know, review the quakes here during the weekend period. Um, let me see if they got probably wasted my time, but let's see if we the if we got these uh, seismograph stations back up and running. I'm sure it's not that big of a deal to get them running still from the 24th. So really. Uh, can't really tell what's going on there when you look at these um, the graphs because they're old and then the ones that are working from the University of Utah are literally completely squashed in terms of the amplitude so it does look like maybe there is some earthquake activity out there but it's gonna be hard to tell how big uh, because well for one with the amplitudes being squashed like that across the entire area you're not gonna see much of anything showing up on nearby seismograph stations that normally would so we'll just have to watch it and see uh, see how it goes here. Hopefully they get those graphs fixed. I know a couple e couple viewers here emailed me mentioning that they uh, sent a message there to uh, a person that could possibly fix that. I do appreciate that. One earthquake uh, this morning outside the New Madrid seismic zone, 2.4. See what else we got going on. Some deeper activity into the Middle America Trench. See that four-pointer? Looks like 4.4. Pretty deep. Raised off the globe, indicating a super deep earthquake there. Watch for some surface adjustment. Also some deeper activity down here across the um, Peru-Chile Trench. Quite a bit of um, movement here recently. But now we got some deeper activity. Watch for some surface adjustment up here as well. Those deeper quakes normally add strain upstream along the locked area. A couple earthquakes from yesterday down across the South Sandwich Trench. Nothing going on here today across the Atlantic. But, man, do we have a cluster going on over here around the Mediterranean, Middle East area. Uh, just watch this area closely. It's really ramping up here today. It does look like, uh, you know, possibly we could see some something bigger brewing out there. I believe it is brewing. The, you know, like I said, the question is where. Pretty good cluster going on here across the Java Trench and the Indo Indonesia area as well. Uh, Japan pretty active northward here along the Curl Cam Chatka Trench. Uh, even down there across uh, New Zealand, some activity there from yesterday. But uh, it seems like ever since we had that 5.9 here, and I think that uh, is that about ready to drop off? Yeah, another hour or so. Um, yeah, ever since we've seen that 5.9 from yesterday, really ramp things up north here, and that's the general movement of the stress when activity takes place out here along this area of the plate boundary we normally watch for movement northward here uh, and that's uh, definitely what we got today quite a bit of activity uh, nothing like I say nothing big yet what do we got for our largest magnitude here that's going to be the one from yesterday that 5.9 down south here that I was just talking about uh, today so far uh, 5.0 after midnight and the uh, Papua New Guinea region excuse me not a big one Watch for further movement, though. We're definitely uh, we're on the move out here. As uh, far as space weather activity goes, let's see what's going on here on the sun. Looks like we had a sea flare overnight. A couple sea flares here in the last couple days. Now, we are watching active region out there. Peaking around the northeastern limb of the sun here. As you can see on the UV image, it's fairly bright, indicating uh, some flaring going on. As of right now, a little bit too early to tell. If uh, it's going to be, you know, something to, to watch for stronger flares. I don't quite have a, a good view of the magnetic complexity yet, but uh, we'll check into that here in the coming days. A couple different coronal holes. Uh, this one's fairly large and uh, deep, at least as far as coverage area goes. That thing is center disk. We'll be lining up with Earth here in a couple days. We'll watch for some elevated activity here with earthquake movement. It tends to be... Uh, Tends to always happen when we get these coronal holes directly facing the planet. Of course, the magnetic lines from these coronal holes shoot out from the sun directly, you know, towards the planet, out into space in general. Uh, but these sunspots and everything else out here kind of loops in on themselves. So this something to do with the magnetic feature of those coronal holes that tend to, uh, seems like it triggers uh, some earthquake activity as far as uptick goes, big quakes. Can't really say they, you know, they trigger threes and fours because those are always happening on any given day. Not in California, maybe, but around the globe. 
All right, uh, let's see. No major roars there in the forecast. Almost uh, getting close to a full moon. 79% it looks like right now. Uh, again, no major coronal hole or um, <laughs> aurora activity. Uh, let's see here. As far as any close approach asteroids go to the planet, got uh, really nothing of any close proximity. Pretty far away. Millions of miles for all of these. This one's been uh, tracked since 2005. 240 foot airplane size asteroid. That's pretty crazy. Large one, but uh, at a safe distance. As uh, far as um, storm systems go today, there's all that rain up there into the Pacific Northwest. I really wish this was down here a little bit more in Northern California where I'm at. Uh, it is coming though. It does look like Wednesday or so. Coming up this week, we have a. Uh, a decent system. I'm liking that. That looks good. It's been looking juicier and juicier when it comes to the precipitation forecast here for the uh, Northern California area. This is a GFS model looking pretty good. Uh, the ECMWF model shows roughly about the same, uh, maybe a little bit heavier rainfall rates there for Northern California and also some rain south of the Bay Area. So that's not going to just stay at the Bay Area north where it looks like we've got a little bit of movement there. Or a little bit of a rain for the uh, even the San Joaquin Valley. Most of the heavier stuff up north, though. North, I do like it. I'm a big uh, rain fan, so bring it on. Uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. I think that's about it. I mean, I see a couple smaller quakes here. One on the Philippines, one on the Parkfield Station there in California. Maybe one in uh, Southern California as well. Nothing big going on. Hard to say if these are earthquakes or not on Yellowstone on the Madison Station. Um, I know the bigger ones will come in, and you'll see it flatline the, uh, this data. But this looks like maybe it could be earthquake activity, but away from the region. And, man, I really hope they get those charts fixed because it's a little on the annoying side, you know. I, I looked, at, looked at these charts for years, and uh, I know when they mess with things, when they am turn the amplitudes down like that, it's just not good um i miss the uh i miss the old system or the old settings that they used to have uh what do we got here nothing big just a little 1.1 up there around big bear city california north of the san andreas fault here just off of it actually have a good one we'll see you guys out here a little bit later on this evening for the saturday night update uh, enjoy this first day of November. Hopefully it's a good one for you. Have a good one.